This is the ultimate personalised medicine. This could be huge. It's actually extremely exciting. It really has opened the floodgates. The enthusiasm is over a new kind of medicine that helps correct genetic mistakes. It's not genetic engineering. Rather, something quite ingenious. A patch to fill in for faulty genes. Ultimately, most diseases have a genetic origin, even infections. I mean, infections can be regarded as an acquired genetic disease. This has enormous implications to a variety of conditions. Cancer, asthma, Alzheimer's, diabetes. Okay, let's go. But right now, the researchers are using their method for a much rarer genetic illness, a form of muscular dystrophy known as Duchenne. It's a cruel disease. Connor Murphy was diagnosed at age three. Uh, there isn't the words to describe what it's like to be told that your child has got Duchenne. Your child has a condition which is untreatable, no cure, nothing. There's days where, you know, you just don't feel like getting up at all. It's like, what's the point? Kind of thing, but they, they, they don't happen that often. It's a pretty sad day when you come to realise that you wish your child had cancer. At least if they had cancer, they'd be able to go to doctor's appointments, have therapies, have treatments. They still might not survive, but you've got something. You've got hope. It's a horrendous thing to be confronted with. A family's often going to shock, and it affects the whole family. The disease is going to steal away his muscles. It's then going to steal his independence and then steal his life. Part of the cruelty is nothing seems wrong in the beginning. The boys look perfectly fine to start with. They have muscle damage, but the repair is, of the young muscle keeps up with the degeneration. Mm -hmm. By the age of three to five years of age, parents start to notice the kids are a little bit slower than normal. The boys become weak. They lose the ability to walk by the age of 12. They use an electric wheelchair by maybe 12, 13, 14. In the absence of good health care and maintenance, 90% will be dead before they're 20. They're literally just too weak to breathe. And every day you grieve a little bit more. Every day your child loses the ability to do something else. It might only be a minuscule thing, but, you know, weekly, monthly, you see them deteriorating, dying, dying before your eyes. There's absolutely nothing you can do. It's usually males who get to shame because the genetic mistake is on the X chromosome. Because females have two X chromosomes, they can normally compensate for the genetic error. The mistake is in just one gene. The gene is called dystrophin, and this is the largest gene in the human body. It's, it really is an accident waiting to happen. It's almost 0.1% of our genetic makeup. An accident waiting to happen because our genetic machinery is so complex, mistakes in large genes occur from time to time. But remarkably... The Perth researchers have come up with a way to reprogram the body's machinery to work around the genetic mistake. It's called exon skipping. And their work is sufficiently advanced for the first human trials to begin in London. Sam Cornelius is in the trial. He's 11 and hasn't got to the wheelchair stage yet. But he does have to endure painful stretching exercises every day. They've discovered that physio really helps this condition and that once the muscle has tightened, it's very difficult to get that muscle use back again. By keeping the muscles stretched every day, it just stops them from tightening too quickly. The trial was to see if the Perth scientist's exon skipping treatment was safe and might have an effect. They've done a few blood tests, first of all. And they done a skin biopsy, which hurt a little bit. And then they put me to sleep and I had the injection put in my leg. The medicine injected would act like a software patch. When there's a defect in your computer's operating system, a software patch is downloaded to fix it. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do something similar for defects in our genes? Well, that's just what's being tested out here. The problem for children with Duchenne is their gene error means a particular protein is not being made properly. The gene acts as a code for a protein called dystrophin, which acts like a molecular shock absorber, giving strength and stability to muscle fibers. Domination. Dynamic. 
Given muscle is involved in almost every body process, faulty dystrophin affects virtually everything. These scientifically accurate graphics show how the body's dystrophin gene makes the protein. The gene's corresponding stretch of DNA is read by the polymerase molecule, shown here in blue. A copy of the information is made in the form of an RNA molecule. Unfortunately, the genetic mistake is copied too. The RNA, in turn, is read to make the protein. Literally, it reads three letters at a time. These are called codons, like a ticker tape machine, and these build up a protein. So you can see the protein being extruded. But the genetic mistake means the dystrophin protein, shown here in red, is not built up properly. And that's where the researcher's ingenious software patch comes in. The patch is actually a small piece of the basic molecule DNA and RNA are made of, nucleic acid. Using the chemical building blocks for nucleic acids, the scientists tailor make one to patch over the genetic mistake. This amazing machine can make any piece of nucleic acid you want. All you do is enter in the letters A, G, C in the right order. It automatically puts them together and produces the product. Today, the Cornelius family have come to find out the results of the product injected into Sam. It's early days yet, and this is a preliminary trial, but the message is positive. The results have shown that the children who received a high dose had also protein production, so they were able to produce some disruptive. Analysis of the patient's muscle biopsies clearly showed new dystrophin protein had been made. Sam is now waiting for the next step, a full body infusion of the molecular patch to see if it can slow his deterioration. Half the kids that were alive when I first started this work have now succumbed to their disease. And I can't afford to wait. I refuse to wait another 10 years this therapy to get to more people. It might not help me. I'm very past the point of being able to walk again. But if it just gives me, you know, use of my arms a bit more so I can scratch my head, take myself to the toilet, whatever. That way I won't need me as, as much help as I get now. And I mean, there's no point getting annoyed and crying about it or whatever because it's not going to change anything. So you just get on with it. Back in England, the next phase of trials for Sam should begin later this year. And in the coming years, as we understand more about the genetics of disease, the exon skipping technique could be used to treat a whole host of illnesses.